Hey guys, Casual Chrono here, continuing with my character development series. For this particular video, I wanted to showcase Lili AS, the Miracle Worker style. So, Lili is also a magic damage dealer. She is a water user, and according to the wiki, she is a cat lover. But other than that, she doesn't really have many other personality traits. So there's not as much personality Grasta that I can use to share with her. So let's build a team around Lily AS, if you happen to have her. Now, the first thing that you should do is to read over the skills and kind of learn a little about your character. And she has this stream glare, which is a water type attack. It consumes her magic points and the strength is based on her total magic points and in miracle form she's guaranteed a critical hit as well and then she has time to try which increases magic damage based on her MP value it also consumes 10% of the AF bar if her magic gets below 50% miracle form ends but when I first cast this it puts her at 100% magic power. So both of these skills basically say to me that magic power is important. The strength of her attack is based on magic, not intelligence. So, and then if I look at the rest of her skills, it's, you know, intelligence of user plus 30, water type attacks, small resistances, uh, debuffs and stuff. So really the main two skills are these two and there is an intelligence buff as well. So knowing that, we want to try and build her to have as much mana as possible. As far as weapons, you can scroll through and see what you have you're looking for anything that improves attack power. So type attack, uh, type attack, continual MP regen, intellect. Uh, that I believe is one of the uh, OOPA arts thing from the time maze. I just ran that this afternoon and I'm uh, still learning a little bit about that. I'm trying to get no access. Uh, Miyaki's has a type attack and so forth. So. We're going to stick with the Elpis Rod, because that is pretty much the most powerful weapon in the game right now, for this first demonstration. So, then we need to find armor. Anything that can either do mana regen or give her mana. And when I scrolled through and looked at all the different things, I have a subspace ring, which gives her 50 mana uh, magic points. So... There are other things like MP regen and stuff like that, because apparently, as long as I can produce enough mana regen, then she can stay in miracle form forever. It ends when I hit around 500 magic points. So if I can stay above 500 magic points, I can stay in miracle form longer. And the way that seems to work, and Steam Glare consumes 10% of mana. So right now I could cast it about five times before Miracle Form would end without any type of mana regen. So if you don't have any armor that boosts magic points, you might look for armor that gives mana regen. And then for badges, anything that improves her magic points. And Toto's Theater World has the MP300 and reduction items. You could look for uh, intelligence boosts or smaller uh, MP badges and stuff, but it looks like m the majority of her damage is based on mana. So I've tried to bulk it up. I have it just over a thousand right now. So let's form a team around Lily, knowing that she needs mana and she needs magic regen. As far as Grasta, three pains or three poisons is still kind of the default go-to right now. And it doesn't matter if you have three pains or three poisons, as long as you have a pain setter or a poison setter of the same type. So I have three pains equipped right now. One has bullseye, which means when she's not using another force, her damage improves. Now Lily, because her skills depend on the another force uh, gauge, basically I wanna try and avoid using another force when I have her. 
Uh, from what I understand, if you blow the another force bar, she will still continue to use up her mana. So we don't want to do that. So I'm actually trying to avoid using another force. So as far as Grasta, the bullseye badge works really well for that. Now, normally you would give the MP consumption uh, upgrade. However, that basically reduces your MP even faster. So I've actually left that one off. You can also throw on other things like put on ore that improve your uh, mana and stuff like that. So that might be a thought if you want to boost it further. I didn't want to use up the reversion ores and I just want to kind of showcase how to build Lily. But if you're building her and you have some extra power of pains, you might want to consider, let me see if I even have any of those ores or yeah, ores. Upgrade, upgrade, we're going to staves, power of pain, Lily, upgrade, let's see. I could do like light shadow, intellect, things like that. The MP plus ore would probably be the best thing for her. So uh, there, I think there might be some, I don't have any right now. Um, there's light shadow for hit points, so there's probably light shadow for MP as well. So if her uh, light value is over 50, that would be the better ore. If it's under 50, we could do this one. So that would be an extra 60 mana on her magic mana. I kind of use it for the same thing. So it could be um, 1066 uh, mana power if I wanted to upgrade those ores. So so that would be how to build Lily, Grasta wise and gear wise. Skills, I went with stream, stream Glare, leave it to me and time to try. Leave it to me and boosts her intelligence and then time to try and Steam Glare are really the only other two options for her. Good options anyway. So building a team around her, we need someone to set pain. When we did the Flamopolis video, I used Iffy and Iffy's a wonderful choice. Iffy would improve her damage, guarantee pain, but I don't want to go to Iffy for every single video. So instead, I'm going to start off with a, not a staff user. I am going to pull out Tuva ES. Tuva has a skill called Deep Torrent that inflicts poison and pain and it's persistent and, and it ignores target resistance. So if I cast Deep Torrent on the first turn, the enemy will have pain the entire time. Great, that's exactly what we want. As far as her other abilities, Abyssal Prowess can boost Lily's intellect by 50% and all weapon type damage by 50%. I'm not sure if staves count as weapon type damage, but the intellect uh, does help because it is magic damage. And then she has a prayer called Paladin Queen, and it restores magic each turn. So for three turns, I can give back Lily some magic, and that would in basically allow her to stay in miracle form longer. In addition, it reduces damage taken and so forth. So it helps with shade users more, but I can certainly use this to try and extend miracle form and to produce uh, pain and poison. So we're gonna use Tuva for our pain setter. Now, as I said, Lily on the wiki is a cat lover. Aside from that, she doesn't have any other personality traits. So I'm going to use by vet again. She is a cat lover and she is a staff user, which means I can give her Grasta, such as if Lily's at max health, she does more damage, which Miracle Form uh, turns her, uh, it, it restores all of her health and magic. So that will at least work for one turn. I can give her Power of Rapids, which improves water damage by 30%. And by vet can have cat, the cat lover. Uh, Grasta, which improves her by 25% more. Now, I do have other cat lovers. Uh, for example, I have Alter Xion, and even regular Xion is a cat lover. So I could technically give Xion the cat lover Grasta instead if I wanted to. I am going to put Xion in the team though because he can give me a few other abilities. So 
since Lily is a magic user, I can use him to deploy magic stance. And it also uh, creates a break, so I can use this to create a break opportunity for Lili. And then he has Suzaku Encirclement, which will awaken his own, so he could awaken his own magic zone to make Lili even more powerful. He does have Gurren Cannon, which while there's another zone deployed, all party members' MP consumption is reduced. So again, he is finding a way to keep Lili full of mana, magic power, uh, so I can extend, hopefully, uh, miracle form even longer. So, and then for my last choice, I'm going to pull out Eva, a slightly older character now, but her skills are great for water characters. She has Glacial Veil for five turns, all water type attacks are improved by 25%. She has Glint Purge, which will reduce water resistance to enemies, and it stacks. And in fact, if the enemy has more than 50% health, she attacks twice, so I can get the stacks up very quickly. And then she also has Icicle Zorch, which is a water-type attack, and it inflicts Break. So I, can, I have two ways, basically, to create a Break with this team. So that's pretty much all I need. She doesn't really have any other shared Grasta. I don't have some of the newer Grasta, like the enhanced water damage with max HP that you can get from Intrada. Uh, so technically, I could give that type of Grasta to Xion, you know, since he is a staff user, or Eva, since she is a staff user. Eva does have Sound Body, which improves everyone's health by 300, but it also improves everyone's mana by 50. So by equipping that, Lili goes from 1,006 to 1,056. And remember, if I had upgraded that ore, I could go up to 1,100, basically, with her magic power. So that's really the only team I need to try and maximize her damage if I want to use a magic zone. So let's go ahead and test it out on Happy Fun Test Dummy. We're gonna challenge one dummy. You wish to know my plans. Now she does require a bit of a setup. On turn one, I'm gonna go ahead and boost her intelligence. I am going to go ahead and deploy the Magic Fates stance. She will, Eva, will go ahead and give the five turn water buff to the team, and I will cast Pain and Poison. Now, on turn two, Lily is going to go ahead and she is going to cast Time to Try, which will turn her into Miracle Form. It will restore her health and mana up to 100%. On that same turn, I'm gonna go ahead and... Mm. Let's go ahead and do the Gurren Cannon to reduce MP consumption. Because Lily has the MP300 and Speed Haft badge, she is going to go last every turn, which means on turn three, I can safely awaken the zone before it's Lily's turn. So we're going to Gurren Cannon it. She is going to go ahead and start the Glint Purge, which is the water resistance reduction. And I need to start praying. So I'm going to cast Paladin Queen with Tuva. You can see I restored mana already. She attacks twice, so right away I have four stacks of the water debuff. And Lily is now in Miracle form. So since she's in Miracle form, the only thing I can do is cast Stream Glare. I can go ahead and awaken the magic zone. I will attempt to cast Break this turn. I'm not, sh I didn't check the speeds of the characters. So if Eva goes first, then Xion's going to use up the break. If Xion goes first, then there will be a break ready to go. 
And at this point, I'm going to cast Abyssal Prowess from Tuva. That will improve all uh, her intellect. So, Lily's intellect as well. Oh, good. So we're going to have break on this attack. So there's the break. Tuva buffs Lily's the last one to go. And she destroys the dummy in one hit. It looked like it was slightly over 1 billion in damage. So that worked out pretty well. So I'm going to take a slightly different approach now. Because, uh, you know, you might not have some of these characters. Uh, ES Tuva in particular is a relatively recent release. So you might not have her. So we're going to create another team that will hopefully do pretty much the same thing. So instead of Tuva, we're going to have someone else praying. We're going to have Mariel ES praying. And Mariel's skills, her prayer, she has Oratio Virtuous, which will improve type attack and give Mind's Eye to pretty much everyone. It's a kind of a lunatic type of effect. So that means Lily will be lunatic. She also has Regina Lumina, which gives all party members an MP regen uh, of 50. So each turn, Lily will restore 50 of her mana. So she's a good character for this. Okay. Now, because we lost Tuva, that means we also lost someone that can cast Pain. And when I started looking through the characters that I have to use, I didn't really have a very good um, magic, pain, you know, non-resisting character. But one character that a lot of people do have is Suzette. You don't need her stellar form or anything like that. Just regular old Suzette is fine. Preferably with her manifest upgrade to the point where she has uh, no resistance for pain. But we are going to use Suzette and her demonic thrust skill which I think I already passed up. Yes. It inflicts pain, it is persistent, and ignores resistance. And uh, it's because she's upgraded, it also inflicts break, but we don't care about that. So what we're going to do is we're going to have her cast pain on the first turn, and then she's going to swap positions with Xion. And when Xion comes in, his Valor Chant will set the Magic Zone. So that way we'll have pain, and we don't, uh, we're gonna have someone praying, and we should have pretty much the same general effects as before. So, turn one, we're going to boost her intelligence, we are going to Glacier Veil, she will cast Demonic Thrust to get pain going, and we are going to have her go ahead and cast the Regina Lumina, which is the MP Regen, uh, because that's for five turns. Well, it says five times. I assume that's five turns. Okay, there's our pain. Yep, there was one Regen. All right. Mariel's going to start praying now. That is going to give the lunatic effect. We're going to swap out with Xion. She's going to go ahead and do the glint purge, and she is going to go ahead and enter miracle form. So there's the prayer. There's the magic zone. Glint purge, which should attack four times because it's over 50%. And now she's in miracle form, and has leveled up. Well, not leveled up, but she's maxed out her mana. All right, we are gonna go ahead and cast Suzaku, and that will awaken the zone. We're going to cast Break. Because I don't want to accidentally use up the Break, I'm just gonna go ahead and have Mariel cast something that does not do damage. So I'm gonna go recast this effect, and she's gonna cast Stream Glare. And again, uh, I, I did not look at the speeds, so hopefully Xion will go first and Eva will go second. There's the Awakened Zone. 
There's the break. And now it's Lily's turn. And there you go, 1.1, 1 billion, 140,000, or million damage, so. So that is another way to go ahead and set Pain and Poison. Uh, there are other characters, uh, Seven, for example, has uh, a Pain uh, effect, uh, and, and many others, so. But you can always put in a character that can uh, produce Pain and then swap them out if you want to. So those are two possible formations for Lily. So now we're going to try and form a party using mostly free characters and a little bit more reasonable gear for the mid-game player. I'm going to go ahead and leave by Vet in this party, even though she's not a free character. She appears all the time. I've gotten 80 light points just from summoning her a gazillion times. Uh, so and she is a cat lover so i'm leaving her in so we can leave the cat lover grasta intact if you don't happen to ha have by vet don't worry at some point you will be disappointed and pull her too but she is good for the cat lover grasta i'm going to go ahead and leave her with the enhance of max hit points and the power of rapid staff as well but if you don't have by vet you could certainly give both of those grasta to any other uh, magic user. So, free team wise, I still like using Aisha for water zone. So, I'm going to give her the water zone skill and then Jewel Concerto and Eternal Fantasia. So, Jewel Concerto under water stance will reduce water resistance and Eternal Fantasia will reduce the enemy's power and intellect. Not that the test dummy really has any, but... And gear-wise, Aisha is a support character, so it tends to be gear that supports her. Uh, I do have a speed badge on to make sure that she goes before Lily, but Lily's speed is only 102, so pretty much everyone's going to go before her. So, who else should we throw in here? I'm going to dust off an older character, a free character, that can help some. We're going to pull out Mayu from retirement. She has a few skills that can help boost as well. Uh, Eternal Silence gives an MP regen. In addition, Rogue Dance improves power uh, of all party members and their intellect. So she can give Lily a bit of mana regen and a bit of in intellect. And then for her attack skill, I have uh, Kagido, which reduces water resistance. So, or well, technically type resistance. So all three of Mayu's skills can actually boost Lily in some way or another. So, uh, and she could be the Grasta holder as well uh, for enhanced max HP, the Rapids, Grasta, and all that, if you don't happen to have Bivet, which let's face it, you have Bivet. Uh, I did give Mayu the Sound Body Staff to improve Lily's mana by 50. And for the fourth choice, I was kind of looking through the free characters. I wasn't too thrilled with many that would support Lily. However, I did run across Nona. And as long as you complete the quests, um, you can get her Nona AS style. So it is a free uh, character with not too much effort. And she's a bow user, so Grasta wise, I don't have anything for her. She does have an ability that uh, I forget the name of it off the top of my head. Um, let me take a quick glance. It was like a devotion or something where basically all of her stats minus HP and MP, so her intellect, for example, 30% of her intellect is given to another character. So I can give. Lily about 46, 47 intellect points uh, just from her ability alone. And then skill-wise, she has a few that will help as well. She has Concordia, which damage of all party members improves by 
It does say critical damage improves by 30%. Uh, one of my uh, YouTube followers mentioned that unless it says magic critical damage, it really won't affect magic users, uh, which I, I agree with. Uh, I have seen the words magic critical damage on some skills. But weapon type, I'm assuming that staves are weapons, so it should still boost her to some degree. Uh, Castigo will improve the water type of attack of all party members by 30%, so that definitely will improve. And for her third skill, uh, there wasn't really too much that would help. She can inflict poison, so if you wanted to use three poison Grasta, you could, but Tiro Velenoso, does n it's not a guaranteed poison. You can use a skill and you might get a poison going, you might not get a poison going. So it's kind of, you know, not a guarantee if you use that one. And then uh, she does have other things like heals, party, and stuff like that, um, but nothing else really seems to help. So, I guess if you want survival, you can give physical resistances and type resistances and all that. But I don't have any of the free characters aside from Asia really equipped with anything because we're not really showcasing them, we're showcasing Lily. So, sidekick wise, we didn't cover sidekicks with the first group, so we need to decide what sidekicks would be appropriate. And when you look through your Lord Ugalele, um, it does reduce intellect and speed of enemies, but that doesn't really help Lili any. Minimander does not help. PC, PC does. Each turn that passes, Lili's intellect will go up 10%. And Tetra could conceivably help as well. If Lili's uh, health goes below 80%, suddenly her max HP and MP will improve by 25% and get some additional resistance, which really doesn't matter. But if this was a boss fight of some kind and Lily took damage, as long as it was uh, about 21% or more damage, then her maximum mana will actually go up. So sidekick-wise, Tetra makes sense. Now, one thing about this free team, no one here can set pain. So one thing I did do was swapped out, instead of three pains, I now have some almighty powers and supreme powers. It improves type attack, and I have bullseye on one of them. You could also put in three water grastas and upgrade them as far as you can go and give one bullseye as well. So your choice. So I don't have to rely on pain anymore with this particular group. The other thing to keep in mind is that Nona, her skill Concordia, when I cast this, it's going to deploy a magic zone because it's based on the target's weapon type and my target is a magic user. So if I cast Concordia, I'm going to overwrite the water zone. Now, water zone, magic zone, not really sure which one is going to be stronger. Uh, in this case, I can't awaken any of the zones with this group anyway, but that is just something to keep in mind. What I have done, I have made sure that Nona's speed is faster than Aisha's speed, but Aisha's speed is still faster than Lily. So I can deploy the water zone immediately after the magic zone. So let's test this group out with sidekicks. Let's kick out the jams. So round one, we're going to boost intelligence. We're going to apply devotion to Lily to boost her intelligence. We are going to go ahead and start doing the type resistance reduction with Mayu. And instead of casting Water Zone, because it's going to be overwritten anyway, I am going to go ahead and, let's see. I guess really the, the buffs don't work. I guess I could just go ahead and give the team regen right now. 
So let's do do that. All right, round two. Now we're gonna cast Concordia. It will improve the entire team's weapon type damage by 30%, and it will deploy Magic Zone. Aisha should go afterwards, deploying Water Zone. I'm gonna go ahead and get the mana regen started. And she's gonna go ahead and enter Miracle Form. And this is the second turn, so the sidekick has boosted intellect by 20% now. Now with water zone, I'm going to reduce water resistance. I'm going to boost intelligence with Mayu. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and attack with Castig Castigo with Nona which will also uh, boost water type attack damage. And Lily is gonna stream glare and we're gonna see how much damage this will do. Look like about 190 million damage, which is not bad for a bunch of free characters and average gear. So we'll go ahead and stream glare again. We'll go ahead and cast to go again. This point doesn't really matter, so we could just uh, pretend like the boss is attacking us. And we've already done a mana regen. We've already done rogue dance. So let's go ahead, the type resistance is being uh, lost right now. It's the last turn. That's why it's fading. So we'll go ahead and rebuff that one. There's 255 million damage. There's some mana regen. Last turn. And let's see what type of damage Steam Glare does this time. So... We'll just go ahead and cast all these one last time. The damage is also going up because as more turns pass, his stack, the sidekick's uh, buff is stacking as well. So even though she's running lower on mana, she's gaining more intellect. So there was another 227 million. So there you go, free team. Only five characters, I don't even have a sixth character, and they did 673 million damage in five turns to the sidekick. Or not sidekick, the uh, straw dummy. So, like before, why don't we go and test Lily out on some bosses? So here we are in the Vasu Mountains. We are about to fight the Sinus Astium 20,000 BC. It's a super boss. According to the wiki, it's a level 9 super boss, depending on how much you uh, take into stock the rankings. And it is weak to water. So we are going to try it out. Death is here. I can feel him here. With the Lili, Xion, Eva, and Tuva ES group with Pisces, Pishi, whatever, as the sidekick. Now, on turn one, it deploys a fire zone. So we're going to remove that very quickly with the magic zone. We're going to Glacier Veil. Vale. We're going to go ahead and inflict Pain Poison. And we're going to buff Intelligence. So whatever attack it's going to do, it will do on the first try. All right, fortunately my team was able to survive it. Round two, we're going to Glint Purge and we are going to awaken the zone. It is gonna absorb the damage because this is a fire attack, but it will awaken the zone and therefore prevent it from popping out fire, uh, the fire zone again. 
we're going to go ahead and enter miracle form and we are going to go ahead and start praying my, my. praying does reduce the damage that this monster puts out So you will notice that because Lily took damage, Tetra's aura kicked in. She now has 1300 mana. We're going to go ahead and stream glare. We are going to attack order to create a break. We're going to icicle zorch to also create a break. I'm not really sure which one's going to go first, but if I cast Suzaku encirclement, it's going to absorb and heal. So I don't want to do that. And she is going to cast Abyssal Prowess, or Prowess. And there is the 50% stopper. It tried to deploy Fire Stance, but it couldn't because the zone was awakened. Now, basically. The fight is probably going to be over as long as Lily can go before the monster kills her. Which, given that she has full health, I'm pretty sure she will. So, I could cast Icicle Zorch again if I wanted to, but let's go ahead and heal the team. It doesn't cause any damage, so therefore Xion's attack order break should stay. At this point, I am praying. I have done the uh, weapon type damage, intellect buff, and all that. Preemptive, so there's really not much left for her to do. At this point, I don't know if it really matters, so I'll just enter Lunatic just for fun. Okay, Eva died, but. As predicted, Lily was able to knock out the boss with the second Steam Glare. So I guess as long as the boss doesn't target Lily, you'll be fine. And this is, of course, team. This team does not have a tank. It's possible some of Mariel's shields, if I had used the Mariel setup instead, it's possible those shields might have helped out. And then, finally, probably the best possible partner for Lily is Dunnerith Altar. I don't have him. He is basically a water mage tank. So that just pretty much screams partner with Lily all over the place. In fact, his counter attack restores the team's uh, mana and health. So if I had Dunnerith Altar, or if you have Dunnerith Altar, of course, then he would be a great person to put in this group. And you probably won't have to worry about anyone dying with him around. So so that is a super boss done with this setup. Lily was equipped with the Void Staff, so she was not using the Elpis gear. I wanted to make it a little more, you know, mid-range. And Grasta-wise, she had the Pains. Xion did have Enhance at low hit points equipped but then otherwise wasn't helping. All Eva had was sound body, and Tuva had nothing. And Bivet, of course, had at max health, Rapids, and Cat Lover Grasta. Sidekick-wise, Pisces, Pishi, and uh, Tetra. And as you saw, Tetra's aura did kick into play, and her mana went up to the 1300s when she took damage. You could have probably just used Tetra as the main sidekick. You would have lost a little bit of intellect, but you would have gotten heals every turn. So anyway, that is uh, an example of Lily destroying a level 9 super boss with a little bit of RNG involved because it could have attacked her and killed her on that turn. But 25% yeah, chance of that happening. So if you fail, yeah, try again. I got curious while editing, so... I wanted to test and see if Intellect really did factor in to her damage. So here we have Lily. She has 
No Grasta. No gear. No sidekicks. And we're going to hit the test dummy. So round one, we're just going to go ahead and enter Miracle Form. Round two, Stream Glare. One point seven five million, it looked like. One three eight. It's going down because she's running out of mana. One one six. And nine hundred thousand. Okay. Got my tokens. And we are going to equip an int badge. Best one I got is 35. That's it. That's the only difference. Alright, we're going to enter Miracle Form. That will also restore my mana. Alright. Is the damage any different? Yes. Two million. 1.7. And 1.1. So there's a definite increase in damage. So, knowing that, that means if I cast my int buff, it should go up even more. The reason I'm doing this test, the Wikipedia, if you click on Stream Glare, it talks about the damage, basically, uh, it's your mana times like up to 3,000. It didn't say anything about intellect. So, okay, intellect of user, 30%. So this is with the int badge and the buff to the intellect. Anyway, so the uh, stream glare description was just showing that it was just straight mana times a certain percentage. But then it had like a chart below it and it had intellect values in the chart. So let's see, is it more than 2.1? Yep, 2.8. All right, so intellect definitely affects her damage with stream glare, despite what the wiki seems to indicate. Good to know. Okay, so all of the intellect buffs and everything in this video uh, are effective for Lily. Okay, so yay. Now we know, and knowing is half the battle. So there you have it, Lily AS. Basically build her with a lot of mana. The more, the better. If you give her Grasta, you can upgrade them with mana ore to help boost her damage even further. And as you saw, it a, takes a few turns to set up, but once she's set up, she can uh, blast all sorts of things. She did 1.6 billion on that uh, boss in the Vasu Mountains. And if you actually don't have Bivet, there is one free character who's a staff user who loves cats a whole lot. So you could always use this character, Fiend, and she is a cat lover as well. But as I said, you probably have by vet. So if you pull Lily, that's what you do. Build her with lots of mana, possibly reduce her speed so that the rest of the team can boost up her abilities before it's her turn and try to give her mana regen any way possible so she can stay in miracle worker form as long as possible. So, sidekick wise, those are probably the best two sidekicks, at least of the ones that I have. Uh, there may be some others out there that would do a better job, but you know, free to play player, I have what I have access to and I don't have access to everything. So, 
Anyway, hope this helps you. Casual Chrono, signing out.